Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are going to be doing uh, looking at an amortization table, which is uh, a table that is, is commonly used in real estate or, or when you're getting loans to show payments for, for loans, interest, and, and whatnot. And so we're going to go through and show you how to easily uh, set one of those up uh, using Excel. So for, for today's exercise, what we're going to do is assume um, a, a present value of, let's say, $500,000. So we'll go ahead and put that number in there. That's our present value. So that's, that's you know, would be the, the loan amount. And for assumption's sake, let's say that we have a 5% interest rate. What is interesting about, you know, working this in Excel is that with interest rates, we're going to be looking at this on a monthly basis. So we need to ensure that it is calculated and the interest rates that we have are based on a monthly basis. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that 5% and then divide it by 12. Um, so that gives us our, our monthly amount there. Um, so number of periods. So we'll assume on our loan that it's typical home loan, for example, 30 years. So we'll do 30 years, but again, we need to ensure that it's on a monthly basis. So what we'll have to do is take that, we're going to take that 30 years, so we're going to equals that 30 years, and then multiply it by 12. And again, like going back to the interest rate, that's the that same thing. I mean, dividing the interest rate by 12 will give us that, that uh, monthly amount. So what we're going to do now that we have our present value, the interest, and the number of periods is we're going to find the payment amount. So what are we going to be paying on this loan? So we will do equals PMT, which is payment, and then that's going to populate some criteria that we can put in. So rate. We know our rate is that 0.42%. So then we'll hit comma, and that's going to give us, that's going to ask for the number of periods. So NPR, ER, uh, we've calculated that as 360. We'll hit comma there, and then our present value is 500,000. And then we'll just do close parentheses, hit enter, and now this is going to give us our monthly payment on a $500,000 loan. That's you know 26.84. And what's interesting, you'll see that it's negative. And why it does this is with like Excel, it's it gets for cash flow reasons. So a couple ways around that, what you could do is either make your present value negative. In thinking about it, like if you had a loan right now the value of that would be a negative value. So that would give you a positive amount or um, I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. You could um, do a negative, enter a negative sign or a minus sign right in front of that payment. And then it will come out as a positive number. We're going to do that just for, to keep things simple. Um, if you would like, you can leave that as a, as a negative number and just do some different calculations as we're going into this. But let's go ahead and, and get started. First thing we're going to do is number of periods. So we we have month one, but we know that we're going to have this up until the 360 period mark. So what we'll do is we'll just select those three numbers and then we can drag down. It's going to drag all the way until we get the 360 that we need. So we'll let that go. So this will show us each month the, the, the beginning value, ending value, interest paid and principal. So very helpful here. And we know right off the bat, our beginning value is that $500,000. So we can just do equals uh, $500,000. We'll reference D2 as the cell and that will generate for us there. Um, the payment, we know our payment is going to always be 2684 and that's not going to change no matter what, as much as we'd like for it to go down. Um, so what we can do is we can lock it or create an absolute value and you can manually do that by doing a dollar sign in front of the D in front of the five and that will lock the cell. So as you drag it, it's, it's going to stay that same value. It's going to be referencing that same uh, cell no matter what. Um, easier way to do that is if you were to, I'm going to hit control Z and go back there. If you were to do equals that D five cell or our payment value, and you can hit um, con uh, function F4 or, or F4, and that will just automatically do a, a locked value or an absolute value. So to find the interest on our beginning value, or like what that interest is on on that first month, we're gonna we're gonna do equals the beginning value, and then multiply 
the monthly interest amount. You could also um, do the, the 5% there and then divided by 12 in the formula here but we're just going to go this way and the reason I've, I've actually broken it out between these two is i want to at the very end we'll show you um the power of interest and, and some other things so very interesting so we have our, our interest amount there next we'll move on to principal so what of that 2684 you're paying every month what is actually paying off the the outstanding balance so what we will do is we're going to take our payment amount minus the interest that's being paid to the bank or, or whomever and whatever's left over is going to principal so of, of that 2684 only 600 dollars is going against the principal so what we're going to do is we're going to take the beginning value subtract our principal and that gives us an ending balance of 499,399 dollars so very very little is being eaten up off the the ending value so we have our first row there and we're going to do one more uh, manual row and then we're going to copy this and, and make it make it automated for the rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to do equal signs and then we know the beginning value of the next month is just the ending value of the previous month. So we can just uh, do a, a cell reference there um, for the for the, the, the F8 cell. Um, again, we know what the payment is not going to change so we can just drag that down. It's got an absolute value, so always uh, referencing the payment amount. And then this formula that we have here, if we double click in there, we see that it's, again, multiplying the beginning value with the interest, the monthly interest rate. So if we want to drag it down, we want to make sure that the, the beginning value is, is referencing the cell below, but we need to ensure that that interest amount stays uh, locked on that 0.42 so I'm going to do again function of 4 hit enter and then I can drag that down and so you can see the value looks the same but it's actually three about three dollars less so we know that that is is working there and then our principal and our ending value both are just they just have um, formulas that are referencing the same row so we can go ahead and drag that down we can see the principal is three dollars more than the previous month um, so again the ending value is, is going down there um, so so that's great we got the second row knocked out so what we can do now is we can just click and drag uh, and we can see as we look our beginning value keeps going down our ending value is going down so we know that our formulas are working the principal principal amount is is going up there so we could just go ahead and, and drag this formula all the way down but what i'm going to do i'm going to hit Control z go back to where we were if you double click on this the bottom right of the row of the data that we have selected double left click it's going to just auto populate the rest of those 360 periods which is really nice for us so what we'll do we'll scroll all the way to the bottom you know that it, it's correct everything looks correct and it works out correct if at the very end the ending balance is zero so you know that your principal and all the interest has been paid off in full so that's perfect it, it looks to work work great there so what we'll do in another check that we can do here to make sure everything was okay is look at the principal so I'm going to click on the top cell there and then hit Control <clears throat> shift down arrow. That's going to highlight all of the data in that column for principal that has been paid. And if you go to the bottom right, there is a sum, so 500,000. So we know that beginning balance has been paid off. That's great. So that adds up. And now I wanted to just kind of walk through. We're going to do a calculation here. So we're going to do equal sum. So this is going to take the sum of all of that principal paid. So we're going to click on the top cell, Control shift down arrow, and hit enter. And that gives us our total principal. Now, what's, what's really interesting and maybe shocking for some people is if you look at the total interest. So we're going to go equal sum. And what we'll do there is just click on the interest column. So the interest that you're paying each month over those 360 periods. Control shift down arrow. It's going to highlight, again, all of that data. Close parentheses. And so that gives us our interest paid, which is $466,000, which is crazy. Uh, that you, I mean, to think about as you as you are paying for a home, you're paying almost as much in interest as you are on the principal. So again, we'll just sum these two cells, and the total amount that you're paying on a $500,000 home is $966,000. So, you know, the interest makes a big a big difference. The number of period makes a big difference. And the reason, again, so I, I broke these two out. So our, our annual interest rate and our monthly interest rate to show you how much of a factor that interest rate can play into it. So let's assume that our interest rate 
was 8%. You'll see that the interest paid is going to increase by, you know, over $300,000. So on that $500,000 loan, total paid is 1 million, 1.3 million. So if you if you were lucky and had um, 3% interest rate, it's going to drop the amount you're paying. So almost a $200, $200,000 reduction in the amount of money you're going to have to pay. And if you look, it's only $2,100 on your payment instead of the $2,684 from the, the 5% interest rate. So it, it goes to show you the power of, uh, of interest and, and uh, the importance of, of you know interest rates and the impact that they can have. So again, that, that's, that's basically an amortization table. Very easy to do, very helpful to, to look. Again, a very useful tool if you are in you know real estate or, or want to look at interest payments over the life of a of a loan or you know a mortgage and so very very cool tool if this was helpful and if there's other videos you'd like to see please comment below and please subscribe to the excel guy as well thanks